Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, men, amen, hallelujah, men. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, oh. Hallelujah, men, amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen, amen, hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, amen. Sing hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, Sing hallelujah. Always dance in the Lord. Always rejoice in the Lord. Look, let me tell you, when you feel that all hope is gone, lock yourself indoors where you and God alone is. Let the power of devil, demon, and darkness see you. When you lock yourself, just go on dancing. Go on rejoicing. Go on telling the devil, Jesus is a winner. Amen. I am a winner. Amen. Jesus is in control. Amen. I am in control. Amen. Jesus is on top. Amen. I am on top. Amen. Jesus is the king. Amen. I am the prince. Amen. Come on. Don't judge yourself and don't judge your situation with what you are seeing because of just environmental, geographical, whatever. No, 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 no. A miracle could happen at any time. And something good can happen. Something real can happen. Something wonderful can happen. For great is the faithfulness of our God. Stop looking with the myopic, you know, eyes. Just the little you can see. Oh, my finances is down. I don't know. You think forward, you think backwards, you start having headache. When somebody said, I know the thought I have for you. Thought of good and not of evil and to give you an expected end. Child of God, don't kill yourself. Stop thinking. I read of something uh, this afternoon when I was about preparing the message. A message, a daunting came in, I read it in WhatsApp. I said, wow, I have to send it to very few people for them to be motivated and encouraged. Do you know what happened? That? You know, a woman, oh my God, oh my God, in one of the African countries, in one of the French-speaking countries here in, in Africa, you know, was visited. But the woman was a nanny. I think they said 37 years ago. If not that far, around 34, 37 years ago, but in 30s, about 30 something years ago, the woman was a nanny. And the little child she took care of left all the way from France, came to that African country and started looking for the woman. Eventually, he located the woman. The woman is not old woman, an elderly mother. Car. Do you know what happened? The boy or the young man gave the woman 100,000 francs and placed her on monthly salary. Oh, who said there is no God? The woman must have been a child of God who must have been praying, Oh God, see my way through. Help me, Lord. Do this and do that and do that. Not knowing that the Lord is thinking, Come on, he has a better plan for you. The Lord has a better plan for us. Why should I die in thinking? Why should I die in worrying? The Lord has a better plan for me, a better plan for you, a better plan for me, a better future for all. Then I should worry no more. The Lord has a better plan for me. Plan of peace, plan of joy, no plan of destruction. I will cleave and lean on him. He has a better plan for me. The Lord has a better plan for you, child of God. When your spiritual eyes is open, somebody was telling me something. The person was so troubled. The person was so worried. Why are you getting worried about unnecessary things? 
So by the time the person was talking to me, I asked the person, I told the person, I said, do you know why you get worried unnecessarily? I said, why you get worried unnecessarily? It's simply because you have not looked into your future. You have not said, God, open the eyes of my understanding. I prayed that prayer and the Lord began to tell me, in four years time, this is where you'll be. In five years time, this is what you'll be. In, five, in ten years time, this is where you'll be. Oh, I begin to measure what the Lord has shown me and with what he has told me. There are a lot of dreams that is keeping me. Whenever things are going contrary, when it seems there is no hope, when it seems it doesn't work, I remember what God said. I remember the dream he had given to me. And I clicked on God. I said, God forever, O oh King, my King. Your word is settled in heaven, it is settled in heaven. Forever, precious God, your word is settled in heaven, it is settled in heaven. Forever, my King, your word is settled in heaven, it is settled in heaven. I'll tell him that it has been settled though. I am not worried. Look, look, let me tell you. My own is to plead the word of God, to speak the word of God, stand on the word of God. If any power come to challenge the word of God, if all the demon in hell come to challenge the word of God, if all the demon and power of darkness in the waters come to challenge the word of God, if all the principalities and power hanging in the air come to challenge the word of God, it's not my fault. It doesn't concern me because I know he that speaks the word will defend his word. All I need to do is to believe the word. It's not in my hand to defend the word of God. No, I will believe the word. I will trust the word. I will act the word. And God himself will he make a name for himself. The Bible said that. Who will he? Who will he open the scroll? Who is worthy to take it? Who is worthy to open it? All the demons, all the power of darkness. Nobody was worthy. And all of a sudden, the lion of the tribe of Judah arose. The king of king arose. The mighty man of Allah arose. And he took pick up the scroll. And every other person bowed. Every other power bowed. Devil bowed. Demon bowed. The power of ancestors bowed. All the power that have been troubling your life, they bowed. They bowed sin. They still bowing before than them, Jesus of Nazareth. Don't kill yourself. Don't trouble yourself. There's a better tomorrow. There's a better future for you. Always dance. Always rejoice. Always give God the praise. Because Emmanuel is worthy. Emmanuel is wonderful. Emmanuel is glorious. Emmanuel is gracious. To him alone be our glory forever and ever in the wonderful working name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. We have a God that we never fail us. We have a God that is too big to fail. I have a God that is too big to fail, too big to fail, extra big to fail, forevermore. He is too big to fail. He is extra big to fail. He has never failed and will not fail. I will follow him forever in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, all of you. God will keep you and bless you. Glory be to the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. You are welcome to this program tonight. As we move on with the word of God. Forever God is glorified. Amen. We're talking about keep consecrate yourself. Separate from the world. Separate from evil, devil, demon, and darknesses. Consecrate yourself. And I begin to tell you, I've told you the meaning of the word consecration. While we spoke the word consecration, I begin to tell you right now the things you need to know about consecration. I told you number one. Oh, mama, I told you number one. Number two. I have, it must be voluntary, number one. When you want to consecrate yourself, you don't, nobody needs to man pressure on you. If you don't consecrate yourself, I'm going to deal with you. I, no, 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 no. Consecrate yourself unto the Lord. Number two, consecration must be unto the Lord. It must be unto the Lord, you consecrate. Number three, God will decide, as you consecrate yourself to God, God will decide what we will do, where we will go, what you will say, and what you will not say. It's only God that will determine that. I begin to wonder how I can be called into the work of the ministry as I am now a man of God. And politics begin to call me. No, if there's a ministerial appointment, any appointment, like Daniel was appointed, come and do this, come and... That is a different case. But for me now to say, ah, I want to join this party and join this party. Uh, no, even if I join any party, I, I want to contest uh, people to vote me. When I have, when have, when I did not even qualify, heaven came 
and picked me up among so many contestants. Heaven picked me up and called me a man of God. Why should I belittle myself to go and, con uh, and contest for counselor? To go and contest for local government chairman, to go and contest for house of assembly, to go and contest for governorship, to go and contest for senate, house of rep, or president. I am far bigger than all these things. The position I occupy already is higher than all this one. All you need to do is that where you are, that place you are, consecrate yourself. So many people will be here, their ads will be on senate. Look at how much they are making. This and this. Are those money they are making real? When they bring constitutional allowance, the one that is paid about two times a year, so many hundreds of millions to be paid, somebody will pocket it in his pocket and then go like that. I don't know the truth of whatever. They were telling that this, our brother that was convicted, he came with a mother. I don't know the truth of it. If it is true, then it's so bad that the UNTA gave him quotation about this heart plant, heart transplant and said, look at how much it will cost. They gave him quotation. He told them to double the quotation. They doubled the quotation. They said they presented it to the house and half of it was given and budgeted that he came with the money and never gave it to them. They were quarreling, troubling, and they were giving quotation to say, what did you do with the first one so that another batch of money will be given to you? I don't know the truth, but if it is true, it is too bad. Because if that thing is built in Enugu there, at UNTH Enugu, he wouldn't, the son, the daughter wouldn't have traveled abroad for such a thing. But you see what is happening? You see where it has landed him. There's always a tomorrow. If you are rich, always remember there's a tomorrow. If you are poor, Always they remember that is a tomorrow. That is a God that overturned and overturned and overturned as is overturning in Nigeria now. Nigerian politics have taken another shape. Nigerian politics have taken another shape. God is overturning and overturning and overturning. He will overturn. He said three times. He will overturn and overturn and overturn until the third become the first. That is God. He has done it before. He will do it again. He is the God that overthrew kings. Look at the king himself that conquered the city and whatever, said God mandated him. He was the king of Babylon, 120 provinces, provinces under him. We said God of heaven said he should build him a house in Jerusalem. Those things the father captured and whatever was sent back to Jerusalem again. That's to prove to you the level of God that we're serving. All you need to do is to consecrate yourself. Say, pray to yourself. When I'm talking about consecration, I don't mean to be religious. I mean face to face with God. I mean exposing yourself to God. And God will remove every those things in you. My people said, there is something you remove in an animal to eat the animal. There's something you remove in animal. Even goat, people like the meat. There's something you must remove in goat. There's something you must remove even in fowl. Many of you abroad have not seen where they're slaughtering goat or cow. Many of you abroad must not have seen it. Here in Nigeria, we keep seeing them. And things like that. You may not have seen them. There are things you must remove. I was where they were slaughtering something. Some time ago, I was where they were slaughtering something. And before I understand it, there was some part that was so blackish. The butcher was so careful. He has to carefully remove it. I said, why did you remove this? He said, Daddy, if I don't remove this thing now, if this thing splits here now, the whole meat will be torn. The whole meat will torn and become bitter. You will not enjoy it again. I said, but it is in this animal. He said, yeah, it is called the bile. That provocative thing, when the, 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 where the spirit, where anger or energy lies. The bile. The bile part of it is so wonderful. It has to be there to help it when it was alive. But as far as it's dead, it is no more useful. There are things that must be removed in you and you become a better person. Maybe when anger is removed in you, you become the best woman. You become the best man. Maybe when lies is removed in you, there are things God needs to remove in you through consecration. Consecration is discipline yourself to serve God, discipline yourself to hand over to yourself, yourself to God. Consecration is keep fixing yourself in a box for God. I say, I can't go further. I cannot go higher than this until he moves me. That is consecration. Fixing yourself in a limit. Telling yourself, I cannot go further than this until God has spoken. Until God has given me instruction. What next to do? That is consecration. Hallelujah. Today we're going to talk and say, consecration must be total hand over to God. Total surrender. That is another thing I want you to know today about consecration. Consecration must be total surrender, total handover. You see to that? We say that God decides what to do. There are people that fail, they are born again. Why are they not consecrated? Their mouth is born again, but their eyes is never born again. Their dressing is not born again. Their speech is not born again. Their dresses are not born again. Where they go has not been born again. Their money is not even born again. 
There was a man that got born again after a baptismal lesson. They took him to water for baptism. As they went there for the baptism of the man, the man have stepped into the water halfway. He said, excuse, ah, I forgot something. He went out. He was having some money in his pocket. He now removed the money. It was later he disclosed a friend and said, they let them baptize me. It's me that give my life to Christ, not my money. They want to baptize me and my money so that every time they talk about money, I'll give them money. Chai, chai, chai. Child of God, if you're born again, are your way is born again. What part of you is born again? Consecration is total. It might be total hand over to God. Total hand over of your spirit. Total hand over of your soul. Total hand over of your body. Total hand over of your actions, your speech. Total hand over of your movement. These are the things I can do. Some people say I can do everything, but not everything is not expedient. I can do all things. I would have, he said, don't I have right to go after women, to marry like brother Paul, uh, uh, Peter did? But no, that is not mine. That will not help my consecration. That's why I remain unmarried that, about St. Paul. And then, have you seen it? There are things that will help you. I've told a lot of people, many people are inviting me. Oh, daddy, today is my bad day. Can you pray for me? Daddy, this and this and that. I told them, I've warned people, I told people, I don't believe in bad day. If you invite me, I will not come because I know I will not invite you. Very early in the morning, some, hey, daddy, today is my bad day. I say, now that you realize how many years you are, may God help you that all the uselessness of your past years will not repeat itself. When I pray this prayer, so many of them will look, I say, yes, we have wasted a lot of years in the name of my bad day, my bad day, my bad day. What is special about your bad day? What are you celebrating? Your, your mistakes? What are you celebrating? Is it not supposed to be a day of thought? A day of rethink? A day of knowing how useless or how useful you have been in the hands of the Lord? So what am I trying to say, child of God? What I'm trying to tell you is that consecration is a total searching of yourself. Consecration must be total handover. You see, there are people that are handed in the church, they are sentimentals. You know, sentimentals is the forceful holiness. You know, people will see them and say, ah, ah, this and this and that. But that is not what we're talking about. When we're talking about consecration, we're talking about total handover of our spirit, soul, and body to God. And so, God, I would have done this, but because of you, I will not do them again. There are people you ask. There were also an invitation people gave to me and said, the Lord said they should give me a word, that they should give me a word. And the Lord, the man was so present the world, being a bishop, was telling me how high he is, that if he gives me a word and projects me, I will go far. The man was so giving me record of what he, the, the word he give me. I said, sir, let me pray. The man said, you don't need to pray. You don't need to waste time about it. This is a very big opportunity. It's a very big honor. It doesn't come, you are very, very few. I prayerfully prayed for only 10 of you that have done exploits for the Lord in your youth, from your youthful time, this and this and that and that and that. I said, okay, I'll get back to you, sir. I, I laughed then. I said, God, give me wisdom. He's a father. I would not want to offend him. Let me tell him, what award? Who is awarding you? You're awarding me because you saw me personally, possibly because you saw where I preach power move. People got born again. Do you know my private life? Do you know my secret life? Do you know what I do? Oh, this is how we hit people on ourselves and begin to say, I'm a Godfather. I am this and this and that. All these things are not supposed to be. We have, we need to have men of God that is our spiritual father, the fathers in faith, the people we have to respect, the people we have to know. But when they turn to become any other thing outside the word of God, turning to be award givers, are you God? Are you God? I saw you preaching in evangelism. You did a powerful evangelism. I'm going to award you. Why must I receive reward for what I'm supposed to do for the Lord? Why must I receive reward from the service I do to God from you? Do you know the Bible says he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart? Do you know the level of the heart? You don't know somebody could be smiling, doing what he's doing, but he's not doing it with a perfect heart. May the mighty hand of God help us so that we're not going to fail, and become victims of the truth of the God, word of God we have known. I let her send back to a message to him. I said, sir, as he stands now, the Lord will not want me to receive that award. For he's the one that will honor me. The Lord has told me not to receive a word from men. I only receive a word from the Lord. And I'm going to receive a word by the day I get home. If the Lord find me real and show me mercy and welcome me that day in eternity, 
Oh, my heart will be full of joy, and that's the highest award. Supposing I have all the award, 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 award. You know, they, they show the picture of a woman. The woman was there. I was seeing something small, 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 small. I said, ah, what are these things? I never knew when I enlarged it. I saw a certificate from every part of the world. Certificate of this, honor of this, award of this, award of that. Receive award from North America, from South America, award from many European countries, award from African countries, award from Asian countries, award from uh, Australia. Ah! Award, 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 award. Every powerful, many award. He, he was given a lot and a lot and a lot of award. What do we do with the award? By the time you meet your maker face to face, what do you need to do with those awards? By the time you close your eyes in dead, what do you need to do with those awards. How many awards did apostles go from city to city giving? Consecrate yourself to the Lord. Hey, he has been consecrated the bishop. That's not what I'm talking about. You can consecrate yourself anything. I was given an invitation and said, man of God, we want to consecrate your bishop. I laughed. I said, do you know what the meaning of a bishop? He's overseer of the church. I am running an evangelistic ministry. How can I be a bishop without a church? You don't know what you're doing. He's a general overseer of men of God. He's a general overseer of the people and the ministry under him. You see, I don't know why. Maybe you fear that if you give that to me, I will offer some money. No, that's not what it's supposed to be. We're talking about consecration, child of God. We don't let consecrate yourself. Consecration must be total, your spirit, soul, and body. Many of us are losing their consecration from the what we're saying, from what we're thinking, from what we're reasoning. We're gradually losing consecration. We're gradually losing the grip. Going to hold those things that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You, you see some people, they will stand before somebody, they will judge somebody. They will scold somebody. What do you think you're wearing? This type of thing you're wearing? They scold. We go into quick judgment about people when we have evil character, when we have unforgiveness, when we have doubt, when we have unforgiveness, when we have anger, provocation, and a lot of things. We come and cover ourselves, deceiving ourselves. Do you know this quick judgment have destroyed a lot of things? I saw one woman, and the woman greeted me. A woman greeted me. Ah, I said, okay. I said, do you know me? So yeah, yeah, yeah. You were in the church. So, 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 place. I am a member of that church. I looked at her. Ah, I looked at her. I said, wow. And one day, one morning like that, she's selling this oil bean tree. We call it over here. She's selling it. They have to cook it and wrap it round. Okay. They use it as one of the, you know, to, to garnish things. Aha. One of the condiments to garnish things and things like that. Spices. Okay. So, she came to my house one early morning. I said, what happened? She was still dressing the way she was dressing that day. I said, madam, why are you dressing? That day I wanted to speak boldly to her and rebuke her. But I waited. I said, here is the public place. I will look for another place. That day she came and had opportunity. That was the first thing I asked her. Why? The woman bent down and whispered to my ear. I said, I'm a widow. I've lost my husband. I have about six children. If you look at a woman that says she's a widow, it's like a young lady that's not even married. If you look at that, you may, if you wear a dress, you may mistaken her, mistaken her to be in secondary school, but that is the, her nature anyway. He said before she, she got born again, all her wears are messed up. He saw her wears are trousers, naked, boogie, and all this and all that. Says so she cannot wear those things out again, and she cannot be born again. She cannot wear those things as a born again. That when she gets money, that she's selling this thing, she's selling, you know, preparing it, going about carrying it. That by the time God help her, you get some money. Hey. By the time she said this, I said, oh God, forgive me. If I become a quick judge, thank God I didn't speak to her boldly that day. I would have walked. So many of us have walked a lot of souls we would have saved away by casting them away, by looking at the way they look, and we give them first sight judgment. You don't know what they're passing through. And then, by then, I cried in me. I called my wife. I called my daughter. I said, your ministry, you have to do something right now. Please, can you do something? Where are your clothes? Where are the fine ones? Please share, 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 share. My wife have to go in, brought a lot of cloth. The woman, then my daughter brought a lot. Do you know in our presence, the woman was loosening them, opening the Hey, this one is good for church. Hey, this one is good for church. Ah, this is good for church again. I begin to look at her. She look at her. She gave her life to Christ. She know there are things you don't need to wear to the house of God. A lot of people who are not sent to the house of the Lord. And they ask you, does it matter? We are something in the street. They ask you, does it matter? She was telling her, yeah, this business I'm doing, I can be wearing this one. She was sharing the cloth there. The extent she will go. The next time I saw her, she was beautiful 
fully dressed, well dressed, well covered. Can you cover somebody's nakedness? This is a part of consecration we're talking about. You don't only stand to preach and condemn people, but you have to look in people's life and say, this person need this, this person need it. I could be an instrument of help. I could be an instrument of usage in the hand of this people, in the hand of the other people. Just like the situation we are in Nigeria. A lot of people are passing through turmoil. A lot of people are passing through pain. Calls are coming. Daddy, can you help us? Can you do this for us? Can you do this for us? Can you do this for us? Sometimes I tell them I'm not a businessman. No. I do according to the provision of God. So what are we trying to say, children of God? Consecration must be personal. Are you hearing me? We have discussed that. And then it will be total. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 8 verse 33. Leviticus chapter 8 verse 33. Leviticus chapter 8 verse 33. Let us look there and see. Leviticus chapter 8 verse 33. Leviticus chapter 8 verse 33. And the Bible said when he was instructing them, it must be total. And you shall not go out of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation in seven days until the days of your consecration be at the end. For seven days shall he consecrate you. He was telling them on the physical consecration. They have to do this prayer for seven days. Stay there. No movement. In that place where they confine themselves. Like I tell you, the consecration is you confining yourself at a particular place for the Lord. Confining yourself in an atmosphere where God can say make a next move and you make a next move. When God has not said the move, you're not going to move. That is consecration, child of God. That is consecration, child of God. Can you consecrate yourself? Have, can you know in those days you are not talking but today you can talk and talk and talk the Bible says out of multitude of ways one should know evil you can talk and talk and talk and talk jagged and talk nonsense and talk a lie and exaggerate and then the sins will be written on you do you know many of us have not taken time to confess what we have spoken with our mouth do you know every night you, before you go to bed say Lord anyone has spoken that is lie anyone that has spoken a lot of stories we read and we post it on Facebook immediately Power. we didn't verify on WhatsApp I've been a victim of that a lot of time. They have posted a lot of things where they come back to say, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. Like there was a time they say President of America died. And they, that was two months ago. If you see the way they put it, oh, oh, this and that. I just posted it to somebody. I said, make it, uh, uh, two people. I said, make a verification. Let's see what will happen. They said, the man said me, as I'm talking to you right now, he's speaking in CNN. He's speaking in saying that he's alive, he's not dead. But why do people promulgate such a lie? May we never be promoters of lies again. May we never be promoters of rumors again in the name of Jesus Christ. May the mighty hand of grace help us, the one we go to go through, the one we're going to move away so that we say the truth and nothing but the truth. We know the Bible said we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. For seven days they shall be there. But our own is lifetime consecration. It's lifetime with the Lord. You have to consecrate yourself lifetime with Jehovah. You have to be there lifetime. The moment you consecrate yourself, we're going to come to that. So that is about consecration, child of God. May the mighty hand of God help on. When you consecrate yourself to God, when you consecrate yourself to the power of God, when you consecrate yourself to Jehovah Shalom, there are things that will begin to manifest in you that when they come, you say, no, this is not what I began. No, this is not God divine plan for me. I know the thought I have for you, says the Spirit of the Lord. I know the plan I have for you, plan of good and not evil, to give you an expected end. The most holy God, the most precious Father, the King of kings, God of God, the loving Father, has a better plan for you. He has a better plan for me. May the name of Christ alone be glorified and magnified in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Unto our King be other glory. Unto our King be other glory. In the name of Jesus. Look at consecration in the book of James chapter 4. In the book of James chapter 4. Look at consecration there. James chapter 4, let's read 7 to 8. James chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. James chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. James chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. Yeah, somebody is there writing for us. It has been your minister, so keep it on. Thank you so much for writing for us. Okay? For well, you've been writing. Okay. James chapter 4, verse 7. Bible says, submit yourself therefore to God. That is consecration. Submitting yourself to God. 
saying, God, I will not do that which I want to do. I'm only going to do that which you want me to do. That is submission to God. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. It's only when you're submitted, submission means consecration. Submission means under the control of God. Submission means under the control of God, under the covering of God, under the protective grace of God. That is what the word submission means. The Bible called submission is the consecration we're talking about. Have you submitted every Everything about you, yeah. You want to go for exam, you want to go for this, they say submit it, the uh, hair submit it, you submit, you submit. If you don't meet up the requirement, they'll tell you sorry, you will not even go for the exam for the father, you didn't meet up the requirement. Any promotion that is coming on, even any job opportunity that come up, they say they require this, they require it for you to submit. When you don't submit that, will you be worthy? You will not be worthy for it. So Bible says, submit yourself to God. Have you submitted your character to God? Have you submitted the anger part of your life? Have you submitted that immoral side and said, God, I submit this immorality. I submit all this. I can't carry them. Help me, O oh Lord. Submit. That means tell God who you are. Tell God those weaknesses. Sir. Tell God those things that have been making you not to continue being a child of God. You have grown. So sometimes you rise, you fall. You rise, you fall. A particular sin, a particular character, a particular behavior. Keep choking your life. Keep moving in your life. Keep troubling your life. Every now and then, a particular issue. Every now and then, a particular unrighteousness. Every now and then, a particular sin. We keep on shaking you from faith and you don't remain a child of God. A particular thing will continue defiling you, defiling you from the presence of God, defiling you from the glory of God, defiling you. No, child of God, this is a high time for you to say, I will arise and go back to my father. That was what the prodigal son did. He submitted his thought to back to his father, submitted everything and said, I want to even be less human being than who I left home. I want to be a lesser human being. He said, when I go, I'll tell my father I'm not even worthy. I'm not worthy in any form, in any way, to continue being your child. What I want you to do for me is that accept me as one of the slaves so that at least I'll be eating. Have you seen it now? He knew he is not worthy. He knew he is no more worthy. But God accepted him. By the time he went to him, not knowing that his father was in desperation. The father said, oh, is that my child? Oh, you're welcome. The father had to hug the baby again, hug the child again, and was so happy and so glad that the child is back to life. Child of God. Submit yourself therefore to God. That's why we read in the book of James chapter 4 verse 7. Submit yourself therefore to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. The devil cannot go away. Look at what he said. He said, Paul I know. Uh -huh. Peter I know. This I know about you. Who are you? The seven sons of Skaven, they come to cast away the devil. They never knew consecration needed to be there. A lot of people saw ministry of deliverance and they jump in and they use the name of Jesus. The devil, I command you, come out, come out. The devil will, will be reacting because the Bible says, in my name, not because of the anointing of the man of God. Why it seems that a lot of men of God will cast away demons successfully and this and that is because of the deep experience and how many years they have been in the Lord. If not, it is the same name of Jesus Christ. Somebody was telling me, said, Daddy, I met a deliverance case. Hey, if you have been there, Daddy. Hey, if you have been there, you just I said, no, it is not in my name. It is in the name of Jesus Christ. What? We have equal power in Christ. It is the same name of Jesus that will manifest. Are you hearing me? But the way you deep in yourself will give you more power, more unction, more connection. And how many years you have stayed will give you experience for those that want to learn from experience. Submit yourself to, the, to God and resist the devil. You have been resisting a particular devil. And the devil has seen the loophole in your life. The devil has seen that is the part of you that have not totally submitted to God. And when you pray, I command you, I bind you. Ah! Nothing will happen. You have not submitted. You have not fully submitted. You have not fully, fully submitted. Here, Bible says, submit yourself therefore to God. That is consecration. Can you examine yourself? Can you say, yes, this part of my life, this spiritual weakness, is, uh, I cannot pray. I cannot, I'm alive, alive in the spirit. I can go ahead. I can move on. I can move in power. I can move in mercy. I can move in glory of God. That is what God is expecting of you. Look at verse 8. Verse 8, draw near to God. That is consecration again. When you are consecrated, you are drawing near to God. By the time you draw near God, you hand over everything. You say, this is what I need to do. This is what I have to do. This is what I have been doing. I will do them again no more. When Zacchaeus repented, he said, I've been a liar. He was walking towards consecration. I've been collecting money falsely from people. All the people that collected money, I'm going to pay back double upon double upon double food. That's what the Bible says. And Jesus smiled. A new consecration was coming into his life. 
The Lord Jesus said today, have salvation come to this house. You never know consecration. You never know salvation until you know consecration. Jesus smiled and said, today, have salvation come in this house. That means Jesus could have come and go. Jesus could have come and gone. Jesus could have come and eat food in the house of uh, uh, Zacchaeus. Everything would have done. It would have been a jamboree. Jesus would have left. But when he performed and acted something, Jesus smiled and said, today, salvation has come in this house. So many the people fear that because Jesus has come in, salvation has come in. No, he wants you to walk out your salvation with trembling and with fear. Child of God, is it not a high time for you to ask yourself a question? For how long will I remain like this? For how long will I be in this issue? For how long will I remain dormant? For how long will I remain unsettled? For how long will I remain? How will I rise and go to my father? How will I rise and consecrate myself? The Bible said in verse 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Oh my God, when you're coming, God will be coming. There's the line where you're going to meet. God will say, come on. And you say, come on. Like you speak to a friend. He say, I'm coming to your house. My, your friend said, I'm coming to your house too. He said, wow, you're coming to my house. My house is far and your house is far. Since you're coming, I'm coming. Let's meet somewhere. There's a meeting place between you and God the Father and that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God is coming to Jesus and you're coming to Jesus. You and God will meet yourself in Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is the mediator of the uh, uh, between man and God. And he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He reconciled us to God. God was far away. Man was far away. Jesus came and said, look at how far God is from man. And look at how far man is to God. Oh, I'll be in the middle. I'll be a middle man. Jesus was in the middle. Straight forth his hand this way. Man come. God come. Man come. Father come. Man come. Father come. Father was coming. Man was coming. Father was coming. Man was coming. And they came nearer. Jesus spread his hand. That was the hand that was spread on the cross of Calvary. He came to draw man and God, bring them closer, and bring them together again. Hallelujah. And when they were together again, the Lord Jesus draw man closer, draw God closer, and say, Father, this is your song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No wonder by the time he came, he said, I'm going to my father and your father because reconciliation has been made. By the time he was going, he said, I came to show you the father. I came to show you the father. But by the time he died and resurrected, he said, I go to my father and your father. Hallelujah. Oh, that was exactly the language they use when I went to Israel, Nazareth. They said, you're welcome to the house of the Lord, my Lord. And your Lord. Jay, the moment they told me that in Nazareth. Where Jesus turned water into wine. When I got in there. They say you're welcome to Nazareth. The house of the home of the Lord. Your Lord and my Lord. Jay. Uh, I had some, some, some move in me. Some juice people begin to come out of me. This is the house of the Lord. Physically here on earth. You can be in the house of the Lord. Physically here on earth without going to his house spiritually. When you know him spiritually and travel to Israel, your eyes will be open on a lot of things. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands. Cleanse your hands. God knew that our hand could not be cleansed. Our hand is evil and he brought the blood of Jesus. Bible said, come, let's read it together. Even if your sin is black, I'm going to cleanse it. That's Isaiah Acts chapter 1, verse 18. He said, come, let's read it together. Come, no matter how dark your sin is, I am going to remove them. I'm going to cleanse in them. I'm going to purify you. I'm going to make you whole and all right again. And that's the God we are serving. His name alone be glorified. So where we are reading in the book of James chapter 6, we have read James chapter 6, we, we, we have read verse 7, now we are reading verse 8. Verse 8, he said, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Clean your hand, you sinner, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Purify your heart, wash your heart, consecrate your heart. Let the blood of Jesus wash over your heart. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse in your heart. Let the blood of Jesus purify your heart. Let the blood of Jesus make you clean and pure. That's the blood of Jesus. That is the blood of the mighty one. That is the blood of ancient of the day. That is the blood. The cleansing blood of Jesus cleanses you. The cleansing blood of Jesus purifies you. May you remain cleansed and purified in Jesus' name. It's only when you submit yourself to God under consecration. That is the only time you are going to draw near to God. That's the only time you can rebuke the devil. That's the only time you can rebuke the power of darknesses and they become rebuked. So consecration is a total surrender. It's a draw near to me. Total surrender. No wonder Jesus said, 
if you are if you are thinking about me and you have not left your mother, you have not left your father, you have not left your brother, you have not left your wife, you have not left everybody to follow me, then you are not worthy of me. He's talking of total surrender, total consecration, total handover. I have done a lot of things with so many pastors, men of God. We have agreed on what we're going to do. Let's meet tomorrow and solemnize everything, seal up everything. And before you understand it, in the night they'll call me. I came home. I changed my mind on this. The wife have worked on them. The wife have told them, how can you do selfish things? How can you do things without having gain? How can you do this and this and that? No, now nah, you cannot do it. And they change their mind. A lot of them that are not married, their father changed their mind, their mother changed their mind. And begin to tell them one thing or another. It will be total consecration. There was some church that was doing a crusade in front of my house, in front of my office. I happened to be in the office that night, and uh, their gents started having problems. By then, I was doing a lot of things in the office. In fact, I was living there in the office. Uh, 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 first floor is my was my office then, and I was living in the second floor. We had Nepal light. Aha. Uh -huh. We have electricity. They were doing something in the field with their gents. And the gen started having problem and problem and problem. I bought a new brand gen in those days. So I called the pastor, said, please tell your men to come up here and carry the gen. Do you know they came up to carry the gen? Do you know the moment they were on the step, behold, Nepal took light. The electric people, power distributing people, they cut off the light. We were all in darkness. The man, they were moving down, moving down with the gen. The man said he was expecting me to call them back and say, you see, you have taken that. I said, no, how can I do that? That would be foolishness, that would be wickedness, that would be selfishness. The work of God is more important than everything that we are doing here. The work of God you people are doing, the souls to be one, is more important than the little pleasure I'm going to make. May the mighty hand of grace help us. May the mighty hand of God help us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're walking for the Lord. We're talking about consecration. It's a total handover. Look at what verse 10 said. I've told you what verse 8 said. Verse 8 said, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hand, you sinner, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Look at what verse 10. Verse 10 also said, in the verse 10, the Bible, the word of God said, James chapter 4, verse 10. James chapter 4, verse 10. James chapter 4, verse 10. The Bible said, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord will lift you up. The Lord will lift you up in the morning, afternoon, and night. The Lord knows how to lift you up. That means consecration is a means of li being lifted. Consecration is a means of being lifted up to God and to the work of God. Therefore, I plead with you, child of God, this is a time of total consecration. This is a time to say, God, I consecrate my spirit, my soul, and my body. I consecrate everything round about me. I have to live for you and for you alone. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. I hope somebody stay writing for me. All the quotations are quoted now, we are not written. They he only wrote James chapter 4, verse 7. We also read verse 8 and verse 10. We read James chapter 4, verse 7, verse 8, and verse 10. Okay, now we've quoted Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. The Bible, the word of God says, Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not a man that walketh to direct his steps. The way of a man is not in his steps. It's not in his life. That is consecration. That means God. I don't know what tomorrow will yield like. I don't know what is happening. That is when you're driving as a consecrated child of God. There may be five ways to your house. But God will tell you only one way to your house. God will say, can you follow this way? And next time he say, can you follow this way? Can you obey God and begin to do what he said you should do? Let's live by the will of God and not by our own way. We're talking about consecration as a total measure of total willingness to serve God in spirit and in truth. And you say, God, I want to serve you in purity, in holiness, in righteousness. I want to serve you in the morning, in the afternoon. I don't want to serve you by me serving you. I want to serve you with all my thoughts. I want to serve you with all my heart. I want to serve you with all my mind. I want to serve you with all my decision. That is when consecration is there. Okay? It must be a total surrender. Not part of you. 
Consecration must be all of you. If you are not ready for consecration, you better see it. That's why a lot of people, they know they are not ready for God. Some people say, I'm still young. By the time I mature, I will serve God. And they come with youthful whatever. And then the evil in their heart, the worldliness in their heart, they introduce this in the house of God. As they introduce it in the house of the Lord, things got spoiled. Sin got out of hand. Sin got bad. No, it's not supposed to be child of God. This is time for us. You say, oh Lord, I know that the word of man is not not in himself. Can you begin to tell God this? My way is not in my hand, the Lord. My way is not in my hand. The Bible said, it is not in man that walketh to direct his step. It is not in you to direct your step. It is not in me to direct my step. It is in the way of the Lord. The Lord is said that direct your step. You may walk now. I want to travel 10 kilometers, 50 kilometers, 500 kilometers. I want to fly in the air. A little pain, a little headache, a little punch or somewhere. And then you don't know what next to do. There are people that are taking trip and they call on phone and tell other people, I'm coming over, prepare something for me. And those people will be busy preparing something, but they never made the end. They never get to the ending of the plan. They never made it to the end. Why? They were not there. They couldn't get over there. They ended halfway. They died. Because the word of a man is not in his hand. That is why you must give totality of your life to Christ. That's why you must hand over your life to Christ because you don't know what tomorrow is going to look like. You don't know what, what next one minute is going to look like. I have seen a lot of people, uh, they are sure they be singing. I saw one lady who was singing, dancing, jumping up, jumping up, jumping up, singing. All of a sudden, she jumped up, bah, she jumped down, and that was the end of her life. She fell down there, and she collapsed. And that was how she died. A lot of people have died in the jiffy. A lot of people have had one attack or the other, spiritual or physically. I know one man of God, the wife was calling me, I said, he said, the old man that said, oh my God. I said, what happened? Has he been sick? He said, they have been head, head and heart, very, very strong. He said he just he has a farm. He just wanted to go and feed the birds. That is all he fell down and died. But do you know one thing again about us here in Africa? An African man doesn't go to hospital because he is sick. No, 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 no. An African man doesn't go to hospital because he's sick. An African man only gets to hospital when death wants to come. African man get to hospital not because of sickness. So he say, who are you sickness? Uh, uh, because of sickness, I'll go to hospital. Do you know in Africa when you hear ah he went to hospital ah. You mean, hey, you went to hospital. Oh, that's why a lot of hospitals are not patronized. And that's why when the cases get to them, it has been worsened. A lot of cases that get to them have been worsened. But can you consecrate yourself right now? Can you consecrate yourself? It's just opposite of what Africa can do. They only go to hospital because death is coming, not because they are sick. Can you consecrate yourself now to God to be like Jesus of Nazareth? To work for him and to live for him and to be who he wants you to be. Child of God, now is the hour there that you worship him, you worship him in spirit and in truth. It's a time of total surrender. It's a time of total consecration. It's a time of saying, God, ah, not my will, but thy will be done. Let the will of God be done in my life, perfectly in my life now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus, in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. Jesus spoke and said, Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek you first. Are you hearing me? Let your spirit, let your soul, let your body seek first the kingdom of God. There are a lot of people that are serving God for different purposes. So many people are serving God to get married. So many people are serving God to be healed of a particular sickness. So many people are serving God to be delivered from such fear and attack that have been coming on them. Some are serving God because of the miracle that he has done in their life. Some are serving God because they love him from wholeheartedness. They just love him. He has done miracle for them. He has blessed them. He has given them money. But they love him from the bottom of their heart. Why are you serving God? If you are serving God for material gain, for financial gain, for healing gain, deliverance gain, it will be difficult for you to consecrate yourself. But when you start serving God from a pure, genuine heart, a clean heart, a heart that is reserved only for God, a heart that is wide and open for the Lord, when you are serving the Lord because of cleanliness of who God is, because you want to meet Him in eternity, because you love Him. Remember that the crown that is meant for all the people that love His appearance, all the people that will love His appearance, that's the 
particular crowd that is meant for you, child of God. It's not time for you to get troubled. It's not time for you to well, be well done. No, get up and rise. Rise up and praise the Lord. I say, rise up and praise the Lord. Everybody, rise up and praise the Lord. I say, rise up and praise the Lord. I say, right now, rise up and praise the Lord. Amen. Rise up and praise the Lord. Rise up and praise Him. In our situation, seek you first the kingdom of God. That is the sign of a surrender. When people are looking for finances, when they're looking for money, when they're looking for a dubious way to have a resident permit, dubious way to have a green card, dubious way of doing one thing or the other. A young lady came to my office all the way from Russia. And then they was looking for this and looking for that. I looked at her, they have prayed for her, prophesied and told her to go to village, that the goddess of the land and God of the village is holding her. She should go for deliverance. After deliverance, she should go for liberation. After liberation, she was talking all day. They were telling her all this. Thing. She, I said, come down. She was in Abuja. Then she came home, came to my office and see me. And while we were trying to pray, I have laid on the radio and had the Lord said, don't pray for her. She has committed herself. She is a born again child of God. She went into a controlled marriage. Moreover, Russia is not my destination for her now. Her days in Russia have expired. I have a better country and a better place for her to go to. And the guests started crying. The, Lord, the lady says it's true. I said, you went into contract marriage? You went into all these things? Where is the man? He said, the man is behaving like as if he has a mental case. The man is like this. The man is like that. The man is this and that and that. I said, oh, God will help us. The glorious son of God will help us. Thank God she changed. Thank God she repented. She consecrated herself again to God. Today, you before understanding, she never, the country she will say, ah, daddy, it will be too hard for me. That is where she is today. And they equally got married and settled remarriage. This marriage, contract marriage of a day have destroyed a lot of people. And have taken a lot of people to hell. Are you in it already? Repent. Have you come out of it? Don't seek to go back again. Allow God to give you the resident permit of that country. Seek a resident permit of heaven, and when you are a citizen of heaven, heaven can introduce you to any country of the world. Relax your mind. You have been a child of God, be a child of God with honor. You have been a child of God, be a child of God with dignity. You have been a child of God, be a child of God with respect. You have been a child of God, be a child of God with regard. Are you hearing me? Consecration is very, very important. It must be a total consecration, not part of you being consecrated. No, 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 no. It must be your spirit, your soul, and your body. Total consecration to God of heaven and earth. Total consecration to the mighty man of Allah. Total consecration to Emmanuel. Look at what the Bible said in Proverbs of the 23 verse 26. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 26. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 26. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 26. The Bible, the word of God said there, He said, my son, give thy heart and let thy ear observe my ways. Give thy heart. That is consecration. Give me your heart. Bible said, guide your heart with discretion, with every regardness, for out of it flows issues of life. The thing that will make you great is walking through your heart. Don't let your heart be defied. Don't let your heart be bitter. Don't let your heart be evil. Don't let your heart be poisoned. Don't let your heart to collect one evil or other that thing. The hour has come. They that should serve God should serve Him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. My son, give me thy heart. The Lord said, give me thy heart and let thy eye observe my ways. When you give me your heart, I'll be speaking in your heart, and you'll be seeing through a different thing with your eyes. May the mighty hand of God help you. May the mighty hand of the Lord help me. Now we're going to live and live and live for the most holy God. Now is the hour day that shall serve God. We we'll do that in spirit and in truth. Having had the word of God about consecration, the consecration is total. If you are ready for it, can you come out? There are a lot of people that say they're not going to get married. They want to consecrate themselves and serve. If you can consecrate yourself and serve God without looking at a woman, that is honor to you. You will be rewarded highly in heaven. Yet, for the people that never defy themselves with women, there's a great reward awaiting for them in eternity. Whether a man or a woman never defy themselves with men or never defy themselves with women, they have never had sex before. And they serve God and they did that because of God. Total consecration, spiritual and body, that will be a great reward. There are some particular group of denomination or Christianity that said they are, they, they, they are whatever, they are leaders, they are the, 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 the people that point to God will not be getting married. The people that they are 
their leaders, leading their different congregations, uh, that they will not get married. Yet you see them hear about you sleeping with people's wife. How can you bring a man who is full loaded, who is energetic, and cage him and say you're not going to get married? That is why I come and say a consecration must not be by force. A lot of them are now seeking for the opinion and saying we want to be getting married. Uh -uh. Why are other denominations getting married and we don't get married? We want to be getting married. But if they get into, but the older one said, for the father we have served and we didn't get married, you people are not going to get married. And trouble is everywhere in the church. And some of them are busy pregnanting a lot of people. You took the oath of whatever and consecrate yourself. I will not look at women. I will not do that. But that is the first thing you do. Is that real consecration? That is consecration by force. A lot of denominations, a lot of churches have consecrated people by force. Some of the people living in our different churches, we poured water or we took the water baptism. Even in our set in Pentecostal, they are not dead in Christ. They are never dead in Christ. They have not died. They are not born again. How much more dying? and cried and we pour water on them thinking that all things are equal all things are not equal and that's why we see them selling on top of water instead of getting down as people that are dead we see them selling on top of water one woman was afraid we we're talking the pastor told me the woman said she don't want to go into water baptism she would not like to do that and the priest the, 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 the man of god or the woman of god insisted and can you tell me the pastor her pastor insisted and said no you must tell me why you are not interested why you're afraid for water baptism he said i'm afraid that any day she gets the water to baptize that she may disappear in the water that the moment they dip her that means she has some leak and click with water which she does not want to tell anybody which she does not want anybody to know about what is the covenant? Can't it be broken? What are those things you have as a secret? Can't it be broken? There are people that you fear they are consecrated. They are serving God. They will go in and do magic and do a lot of things. Some are worshiping Python. Some are worshiping one idol or other. Some have one small God or goddess in their inner room, in their inner chamber. They are secretly worshiping. Let me tell you, anything you are secretly worshiping, I will tell you with disgrace you on the last day. That will be your doom. If you don't repent now and serve only God of heaven and earth, if you don't repent now and serve only Jesus of Nazareth, that thing you die doing, they're thinking that nobody's seeing you. God the Father is seeing you. God the Son is seeing you. The Holy Spirit is seeing you. The angels are seeing you. The witnesses of God are seeing you. And very soon, you will be exposed. You better repent. Expose the devil before the devil will expose you. Let Find out your sin before your sins will find you out. It's the time of consecration. Totally. Are you ready now? Are you ready to say, Lord, I've been serving you in part, but now I want to serve you fully. Everything in me, everything within me, my spirit, my soul, my body, everything within me around about me, just serve the true God. Just serve the living God and let the true living God be the King and God, be the God and Lord, be the Father of our Lord Jesus and your Father. Jesus has reconciled us with God. Then what are we doing? Is it not time to repent? Is it not time to consecrate? Is it not time to say, God, I come back to you. Show me mercy. And God of mercy will show you mercy. Shall we begin to pray? Can you begin to pray and say, God, your God of consecration, your God that keepeth me pure and whole, your God that separated me from every power, forces, and influences, you are that God, Lord. You are that God, Lord. You are that God, Lord. You are that God, my Lord. I will serve you. Lord, where can I please you? Forgive me every sin, every impurity. I want to consecrate my heart. The consecration has to start with my heart. From my heart, it will overflow in me. Can you begin to talk to God? God wants to do a lot of great and mighty things for you this year. But God is waiting for consecration. God is waiting. Can you consecrate yourself? Can you do total handover to me? Can you ask me to come in? And then I will come in. Oh, Mashara Brahim, that sent to Rimama. This is our day that you worship God, you do that in spirit and in truth. If you're here now, you have heard the word of God, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to be born again, you want to be a child of God, you don't want to continue in your evil way, in your old way, in your religious way, in that adulterous way, in that lustful way. You say, God, I'm tired of this, I want to serve you. Can you say after me, can you say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry I am a sinner. Come into my life, O Lord. Forgive me every of my sins. Give me grace to be your own child. Forgive me every sin and unrighteousness. I receive you right now, Lord Jesus. Into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Show me mercy, O Lord. And let your name be praised and glorified. In the name of Jesus.
Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallowed be your name for total forgiveness, for purifying and washing us, for making us pure and whole and dedicated. To you alone be other glory, Lord. I pray for you, my sister that is already born again. I pray that your spirit, soul, and body be handed over to the Lord. Where you are failing in your consecration, may you repent. May you repent. May you repent. May you repent. May you repent from all this evil. And come out in the name of Jesus Christ. May you stand for God of heaven and earth. May you stand for great I am that I am. May you stand for the mighty man of valor. And let the power of righteousness of the Lord keep you. Protect and preserve you and make you who you should be in the name of Jesus. For the joy of the Lord remain the strength of your life. To God be our glory who loveth and careth. To God be our glory who is the Father of our Lord Jesus. To God be our glory who loveth us. And we are love of God and by the power of His might. His name be magnified forever. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. God will bless you and keep you. God will prosper your ways as you continue being holy and pure before Him. His name be glorified. I pray for you, each and every one of you. May God grant you the desire of your heart. What is the desire of heart? Do you want to have your green card, a resident permit? In a genuine way, may you receive it in Jesus' name. Do you still need a baby? Is it a boy or a girl? Whatever one you need, let the God of heaven and earth grant you the desire of your heart in Jesus' name. For you that want to get married, may God give you the real man, the real woman. Let him or her come your way right now and you get settled in Jesus' name. God knows where your wife is. God knows where your husband is. May the Lord look, make you to locate him or locate her. And may you meet in Jesus' name and get settled in marriage. You will not marry the will of the devil or demon. You will marry the will of God. Nothing but but the divine will of God is what you're going to marry and Christ will be honored and Christ will be glorified and Christ will be elevated and Christ will be glorified in the name of Jesus. We bless the saint of the days. We bless Emmanuel. We just want to say thank you for your love and mercy. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. God will keep you going out and coming in. This week shall be a glorious one for you. You're going to have a beautiful Tuesday, a wonderful Wednesday, or the awesome and the rejoicing Thursday, a defying Friday, a rejoicing Saturday in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God peace will rest upon you. It is well with you. God bless you. Remember our marriage seminar is coming up 17, 18, and 19th of next month. Don't worry, very soon our flyer will come out. When our flyer come out, we're going to distribute it. A lot of you is going to get a flyer. A flyer is coming out. So come on, send forth your question to my WhatsApp number. First come, first serve in the question, and God will be glorified. God bless you. Marriage is a lot of problem is coming up. I know that there are a lot of people who pump in questions, but no. That's not the time for question. Now is the time for you to pump in your question. We have a wonderful teaching. We're going to talk about marriage. My wife will be there live. We shall all be there preaching Jesus of Nazareth. God will keep you and protect and preserve you. For the joy of the Lord remain your strength. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. To meet again by Wednesday evening, we're going to continue on this topic on consecration. Remember on Sunday by 9 a.m. and during time, those that could not make it to church, those that have no place to worship, those that are worshiping in fair play, come on, that's the time. We stay together, we hear the word of God, and Christ will be glorified. Bless you, and may God keep you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. It is done. Amen. God bless you.